the next week, we're going to see how the QR factorization fits into solving what's known as the linear least squares problem. And what's the linear least squares problem? Well, if you want to solve AX is equal to Y, but A has more rows than it has columns, then this becomes solving the problem approximately. You're trying to find the best x such that a times x is approximately equal to y. And a step in this process is to first compute the qr factorization, so then you end up with q times r times x is approximately equal to y. And then subsequent to that, a step towards that is to say update y with q Hermitian transpose times y. Now, if Q was stored as this sequence of householder transformations, then Q really exists as all of these H's. And then if you want to update Y with Q Hermitian transpose times Y, what you really need to do is multiply Y in the reverse order by all of these Householder transformations. And remember, the Hermitian transpose of a householder transformation is that householder transformation. Okay, so let's have a look at a typical step in that process. Okay, imagine that you have already applied all of the householder transformations associated with the householder transforms that were stored below the diagonal here in matrix A. And then what happens in the current step? Well, in the current step, you can then expose the next column and row in the matrix. And the only part we really care about, actually, is this vector U21, which stores the householder transform that needs to be applied next. And then similarly, you have a vector of all of these scalars tau that were involved in all of these householder transformations. So you need to pick out the tau corresponding to the current Householder transformation. And then you expose the different pieces of Y. And what you then need to do in the current step is apply this householder transformation to vector Y0 with psi 1 and y2 exposed. Okay? And what does that mean? We just need to apply this householder transform to this part of the vector. And that can be done. That means the following computation. Now, again, you could explicitly go and form this particular matrix and then do the matrix vector multiply. But what you recognize is that you could first do this dot product, after which all you need to do is subtract from this vector a scalar, which is this scalar times the dot product that you just computed times this vector right here and then you move on. Okay? And this is why often we don't ex ever explicitly um, compute Q at all. That, you know, computing Q is very expensive. It's an order m times n squared computation. What we can do instead is apply the householder transformations to the vector y and that gives the same result.